morning, Lighthouse Center. Good morning, Lighthouse family. I hope that you have a wonderful week. Indeed, God is so good in our life. He is always with us, providing all the things that we need uh, in our weekly basis. And uh, I've been uh, experiencing God's goodness into my life. And then um, once again, we welcome you to our our service. Uh, Today it's really a wonderful day that the Lord has made for us, and I do believe and I, I pray that all of us will be excited with uh, with the day that uh, that the Lord uh, has made for us. And then it's really a privilege and really a joy for for us to be in the presence of God. Before we 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 start with a word of prayer, I would like to really read uh, some verses in the scripture in uh, Psalm. If you have uh, your Bible with you, please uh, turn with me in the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 1 to 3. I'll be reading in a New King James Version. It says here in my, in my, in my Bible, or NIB, New, in, New International Version, it says, I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will, glo I will glory in the Lord, let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. What an inspiration, what a really an encouragement that comes from His word that we need to really extol the Lord at all times. It means whatever season that we may have in our life, we need to really exalt the Lord into our life, whether at work, whether uh, we are uh, on the street, we are at home, a supermarket, a supermarket, wherever the Lord will bring us, may the Lord be exalted into our life. The Lord bless you, and then uh, let's uh, begin our service with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful, O Lord God, for this is the day that you have made. Lord, thank you for the past week. You've been so, so good unto us and faithful in all our needs, oh Lord God. Lord, thank you for your protection, your love, and really your grace that continuously flowing into our life. Lord, as we start our service, oh Lord God, I pray for every household, every family gathered in your name, that your name may be exalted, oh Lord God, even though we cannot able to really meet physically, but we could, we could, uh, we can meet in in your presence, O Lord God. Lord, I pray that you will just move in every houses, in every heart, Lord God, that is really participating in this, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, live stream, O Lord God. And I pray, God, Hallelujah, through our praises and our worship unto you, Lord, that we may please you and your name be exalted in our midst, oh Lord God. Lord, thank you. Bless every part of our service, especially for the preaching and sharing of your word. Lord, may the Holy Spirit speak to us, and Lord, help us to really, whatever things that we will hear, help us, oh Lord God, to put it into our life. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, honor, and thanks. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. had a great um, sleep and rest and I hope that you are um, ready to worship God in songs and praises because he deserves it all from his people and I hope that you guys are blessed today with the message as we open our hearts and worship amen so I invite you guys to sing with me to worship him with these songs
faith Your faith and that's that we don't deserve But still you are faithful Jesus Not enough All my life I've been faithful And all my life I've been so Oh, girl, with every breath.
Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters at Lighthouse, my spiritual family in Belgium. I am excited to share God's word with you today. Kumusta na pala kayo? I hope you're doing well. It has been more than two months since the lockdown in the Philippines. In Belgium, maybe it is somewhat similar. I trust that all of you are doing well and experiencing the Lord's provision and protection amidst the coronavirus pandemic. Always remember, God is good and He is always in control of our lives. Would you please join me in prayer as I start my sermon this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask your Spirit to bring illumination and uh, revelation. I pray that you would fill each one with your power. I pray that you would minister to us, Lord, in your most unique way this morning. I pray that your word will encourage and uh, bring life to those who are, uh, who are sorrowful, those who are weary, those who need a special touch from you. We commit this time to you, O oh God, and may you be honored and be blessed through your message. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you feel tired, weary, and burdened? What are the reasons for this sense of tiredness? How are you coping? or overcoming them. Today I'd like to talk about Jesus Christ's invitation to rest in Him in Matthew chapter 11. Follow me as I read our Bible passage in Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Okay, please open your Bible with you. Uh, if you have a digital Bible, kindly open your Bible app and go with me to Matthew 11. And we will be studying verse 28, 29, and 30. Okay? Are you there already? Okay. I'll read and I hope that you will follow me. Verse 28. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. There are two characteristics to the invitation of Jesus 
in our passage. When Jesus said, Come to me, notice two very important characteristics. First, it is personal. Okay? It is personal. Jesus does not say, Come to church. Come to a pastor, to a creed, or to anything. But his invitation is to himself, to a vital, dynamic, radical relationship with the living Lord. Come to Jesus, for he alone is the way, the truth, and the life. There is salvation rest in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. So come to Jesus and to Him alone because when you come to Jesus, your life will take a dramatic turn. Oswald Chambers said, personal contact with Jesus alters everything. When you come to Jesus, you will, you will never be the same again. Do you believe that? Come to Him. One time the Prince of Preachers, Charles Spurgeon, said, Come, because Jesus drives none away. He calls people to himself. And his favorite word is come. Not go to Moses, but come to me. To Jesus himself we must come by a personal trust. Not to doctrine, ordinance, nor ministry, are we to come first, but to the personal Savior. This is what Charles Spurgeon preached. You know, the coronavirus pandemic exposes a weakness of the modern church. For too long, Christian churches operate by inviting non-Christians to the church building. We think unbelievers need to be brought to our places of worship in order to hear the gospel. We think they need to be in church so that they can be called Christians. We think that they should come to church so that they become part of Christ's family. There is a problem in that kind of thinking. That is an, a, an approach that uh, most churches worldwide are adopting that is attractional in nature. And you can see that most especially in Western churches. But even here in the Philippines, we adopt such kind of mindset. And that's a problem because... You know, there are so many Christians in the world today in isolated places. There are no churches or church buildings. They are all alone in their own homes. There are Christians who are being persecuted, and so they cannot go out and congregate in a certain location. You know, and there are also Christians who are imprisoned. They are inside prison cells. So do you think they are no longer Christians because they are not in the church assembly? They are not found in church buildings? No. Because they became Christians when they received the invitation of Christ. They attached themselves to Christ. They became Christians because Christ is the Lord and Savior of their hearts. They are not Christians because they are not part of an assembly. And so therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you know, we can operate uh, as believers of Christ even if we are isolated, even if we cannot go to our church buildings, even if we are uh, staying in our own homes, we can still worship the Lord. We can still love the Lord. Salvation is still secure. Our identity is in Christ, not in our church building. Now, many Christians, because they 
uh, grew up thinking that they need to be in a church building in a certain location somehow they believe that our spirituality is tied to our Sunday worship service so if they don't go to the church there is a problem with their spirituality and again this is something that we need to uh, correct because there is a problem with our ecclesiology our understanding of the church in the New Testament the church was meeting in their own homes different homes throughout the city they did not have a certain place where they congregate and the context was different because there were uh, people looking for them to persecute them or, or place them inside prison or even to kill them so they needed to uh, uh, to protect themselves you know so the uh, the ho home church or house church uh, approach in the first two centuries was persecution proof but perhaps today because of this pandemic God is telling us that there is beauty in the New Testament church that the church today can actually be pandemic proof also if we are able to gather in our own homes and to disciple our own families no persecution no pandemic can destroy the church of Christ of course we are looking forward to a day when we are able to gather again without fear of the coronavirus or any virus okay but we still have to learn to disciple our own families in our own homes let us put up our family altars you know and then when we go out let's make a difference in our world so attractional may be good if there is a church building that we could bring our people to but a missional church a truly missional church brings the church to where the people are located so um let's not be tied with the church building let us not be tied with a certain location let us shine where we are okay and when uh, we we congregate in our uh, local church that's where we have uh, corporate fellowship again you know and then be discipled uh, we will receive wonderful sermons and we will be uh, uh, equipped to serve the Lord that's wonderful I hope that one day we can do that uh, but while we are still in a lockdown do your best to disciple your family okay so remember Jesus is saying come to me okay our spirituality is not about our pastor uh, it is not tied to a building a denomination or anything else okay we can enjoy a vibrant and dynamic growing relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ even if we are all alone even if we are uh, inside a prison cell we can still worship the Lord we can love the Lord okay we can worship uh, with all our might and there are uh, no distraction inside a prison cell correct so that's the first characteristic of Christ's invitation it is personal okay an invitation to himself not to anything else okay you're a Christian because you received Christ's invitation okay you're not a Christian because you went to a church you're not a Christian because your name is listed in the membership list of a church no you're a Christian because you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior come to me he said the first characteristic 
it is a personal invitation. And the first characteristic of Christ's invitation, the, the, the second uh, characteristic is the urgency. Okay, there is urgency. The invitation is for now. It's not tomorrow or not in the far future. It cannot wait. So do not wait. Come to Jesus by faith and trust in Him. Today may be the day of salvation. But if you're already a Christian, I believe you have friends and loved ones, neighbors, co-workers, former classmates, and so on. Many of them do not know Jesus. They have not heeded Christ's invitation yet. They have not experienced salvation rest. My question to you is this. What will you do to change their situation? What will you do during this time of pandemic? Now, do you notice the word all? Jesus said, come to me, all of you. Jesus was not speaking to a few, not to many, but to all. Even though he was speaking to a Jewish audience, but with the word all, he actually opened the gates of salvation to sinners from every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation. All are invited to come and all are promised rest. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Even though the invitation is for all, it is also for a group of people. Do you notice that? It is for those who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Jesus calls to himself everyone who is exhausted from trying to find and please God in his own resources. Jesus invites the person who is weary from his vain search for truth through human wisdom who is exhausted from trying to earn salvation by good works, who failed to achieve God's standard of righteousness by his own efforts, who is tired of living in sin, everyone who is weighed down by the worries and anxieties of life. Maybe some of you are tired for whatever reason. No, I'm not talking about physical tiredness, because that is very easy to solve. Good sleep, healthy food, less physical activity will solve physical tiredness. But I am talking about a different kind of tiredness. Come to Jesus. He is inviting you to come to Him by inviting your friends, loved ones and neighbors to come to Him. Jesus is pleased. So friends, bring non-Christians to Jesus, for he also promised rest for them. Look at his promise in verse 28 and verse 29. Rest. And I will give you rest, and you will find rest for your souls. Rest is what Jesus promised. And he described this gift to his followers as rest for their souls. Okay? It is not about the physical body, but the soul. And this gift from Jesus should be considered as the birthright of those who already placed their faith in him. To every disciple, to every follower of Christ, you should be experiencing rest. It should characterize the life of a believer. But what if we are not experiencing rest? 
if we are already disciples of Jesus and we don't have rest in our souls, is it all right? I don't think so. I think there is something wrong when believers of Jesus Christ do not experience rest for their souls because he has already promised rest. And I think that's because we are no longer enjoying intimacy with Jesus. You know, as we grow old as Christians, the tendency is just to coast in our spiritual lives. We are no longer intentional in our Christian walk. We are just following routines. And my friends, my brothers and sisters, spiritual complacency does not bring rest. Today, Jesus is once again inviting you to come to him to experience rest. Will you accept that invitation? Now let's move to verse 29 and verse 30. What does Jesus mean when he said, Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. What does it mean? Now in ancient farming societies, farmers train a new animal, okay, such as an oxen, a new animal to plow. Usually, it is yoked to an older, stronger, more experienced animal who carried the burden. And that experienced animal guides the young animal through the learning process. So, when you take Jesus' yoke, he attaches himself to you and he journeys with you. Okay? He teaches you how to navigate through life in a way that is simple and uncomplicated. We learn kingdom principles from our discipler, from our master through his life and his teaching revealed in scriptures. And he deals gently with us as a humble servant. Our master, the Lord Jesus, is not harsh, but gentle and kind. He patiently deals with our weaknesses and our failures. So when we yoke ourselves with Jesus, the person, remember? Jesus, the person. When we yoke ourselves with him, not the traditions and laws, we find that life is easy to live. We find deeper peace because we trust in him more. Life is simplified because of our relationship with him. The truth is, most of us are living complicated lives, even as Christians, because we added so many things in our lives that are, are actually unnecessary. We are doing things that Jesus did not instruct us to do. We added so many things in our lives that complicate everything. But Jesus wants, her, wants you and me to have a simple life so that we can have rest. So that it is not complicated. Let me share with you some practical ways to experience rest, okay? These are practical ways that I hope could help you. Please write them down if you have a, a paper and a pen available. Number one, start the day with your thoughts focused on Jesus. It's important to have a daily quiet time or devotional time with God. Now, I know that's not easy to do. It takes effort, you know. But that is the ideal 
uh, practice. You wake up in the morning and you give time to Jesus. Now, I don't know uh, what that means in your life. If that is only three minutes, five minutes, because, you know, it's difficult for you to uh, wake up in the morning and then you go straight to work. You know, even perhaps when you are walking, uh, going to your workplace, you can still talk to Jesus. Okay? Um, but if you could find time, maybe just five minutes, ten minutes, you know, before you do anything else, why don't you pray? Find a place to have your time with God and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to you. And I would like to suggest that if you have a, a notebook, make it as your journal book. When you read the Bible, write down your learnings because you will not remember everything. You know, when you read scriptures, there are ideas that come to mind. The Holy Spirit will give you insights. If you don't write them down, you cannot really remember these things. Okay? Now, if you become comfortable with this kind of practice from five minutes, it may become 15 minutes or 30 minutes. And others who are really uh, have been doing this practice for a long, long time, maybe five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning, they're already doing this. And then for an hour, maybe, you know, they are just focused on Jesus. And uh, before they have their breakfast, they already uh, found rest in their heart because the Holy Spirit has ministered to them. The Holy Spirit has comforted them, encouraged them that everything will be fine. So that's the first thing, okay, uh, that uh, you can do to experience rest. Second is to establish cycles of rest. This is a, a wonderful uh, suggestion by a world-renowned pastor, and he said that uh, every day he gives an hour, a me-time for uh, himself, and just uh, to rest uh, in God. Uh, it doesn't mean to take a nap, but to contemplate, to pray, to think, and to just allow the Holy Spirit to, you know, somehow give clarity uh, on uh, perhaps a word you receive in the morning, or maybe put uh, in in right perspective the uh, the insights, the spiritual truth that he received, or maybe an idea how to apply it in his life. You know, so if you could carve a a time uh, for you. To uh, spend time with God one hour a day that's a wonderful uh, practice and then of course weekly from daily weekly that is why Sabbath day is important you know you need a, a day also to rest but that doesn't mean you sleep the entire day but it means for that day you just dedicate it for the Lord okay there is physical uh, rest, but uh, there must also be a time to just uh, be focused on God, listen to His voice, okay, and uh, reflect on His Word. Then if you could also do a another day off in a month, if you could find a day uh, in a month so that you could spend time with God, that is also a wonderful time. And also annually, if you could find a, a time uh, each year and you dedicate it for the Lord, okay? Like a, uh, uh, I don't know, if you could do a, a week-long uh, uh, retreat, that is also a wonderful time. So it depends on you. It depends on your situation and your context. If you can establish cycles of rest, that is a wonderful uh, practice. Number three, 
Share your worries and anxious thoughts to a trusted accountability partner or godly disciple and ask for prayers. You know, it's, it's good to have a friend, a close friend, that you can talk to and you can openly share your, your worries, your problems. And then you also need to be a trustworthy partner if someone asks you to be his or her accountability partner, okay? And so those are three things that I suggest. There are uh, more that we could add, but uh, uh, we, we can start with these three uh, practical ways, okay? And I hope that uh, you will do your best to practice these three uh, uh, ideas. Before I close in prayer, I would like you to reflect on this question not just the whole day today, but maybe the entire week with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And this is my question. I hope that you will write it down so that you will not forget. Okay, are you ready? If yoking with Christ is the key to deeper rest, what do you need to do during the season of pandemic? to help others experience this rest. Let me repeat. If yoking with Christ is the key to deeper rest, what do I need to do during the season of pandemic to help others experience this rest? Okay? Think about it. Today and the rest of the week, and I trust that the Holy Spirit will provide you answers. And I hope that you will obey the, the Spirit of God. And I'm sure that He will help you. Will you please join me in prayer as I close this time with you. Father, we thank you for your word. Because your word reminds us that there is available rest in you. And there may be some of us who are weighed down by our worries, our anxieties, our fears. Lord, we just have to come to you once again and accept your promise. And Lord, we need it today spent especially during this time of pandemic. We can only minister to others if we have rest in you. When people see peace in us, then somehow we can impart this to them. We can comfort and encourage them. As believers, we are called to shine but we can only shine if there is light in us. We can only pacify the uh, emotions of other people if there is peace in our hearts. So today, Lord, help us to find rest in our weary souls. And may you use us, O oh God, to bring this promise from you to others who are desperately in need of this rest. I pray, Lord God, for Lighthouse family to shine in Brussels, in Ostend, and in different places in Belgium and beyond. During the season of pandemic, may this church, Lord, will bring the hope that we have in you May we bring the life-saving gospel to others who are around us, friends, loved ones, neighbors, who are desperately in need of you. They are dying, and we are the ones called by you, Lord, to reach out to them, to bring your life-saving power. Lord, thank you for the promised rest. Thank you, Jesus, for
for you are our rest. Thank you for your word that reminds us today. And we ask that your grace will help us apply the word, your glorious word in our lives. We praise you, we worship you, our glorious God. To the most powerful creator of heaven and earth, who is sovereign in wisdom and his dealings with men, loving and gracious to his children, we offer all our praise, worship, and adoration, even in the midst of a global crisis. We worship you, O God. And God's people said, Amen. Now, man. Thank you very much, Lighthouse family. I love you. I am praying for you. And I hope that one day I'll see you again. God bless you.